What I want to talk about is um, when I start to work additively, there's obviously a lot more that can happen to this face. We can talk about ears, we can talk about heads, um, but I want to kind of talk to you about adding in what I call kind of like the fatty parts of the face. It's not all fat, some of it's like connection points of muscles, but when I was telling you about this book, is it's really great, like this in particular, this is the mouth, right? And these little pink tubes at the bottom of it are these kind of fat areas of the face. And these are all the little things like here, 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 your nasal labial fold. All those things are gonna be what starts to flesh out the face. Um, you can see here, there's sort of this topographical map of the lower part of the face. These are the things we're gonna start to put in. Because right now it's pretty generic. So we wanna start to add like the meat. And this is a picture of an older fella, but that's a really good kind of example of what you know, an exaggerated example, if you will, for this age that I'm sculpting of what those fleshy parts would be. This is where I'm kind of just going off the script and adding clay. You need to use your eyes for this. You need to have reference material for this. If you have a mirror, that would be another good thing to use. And basically, don't do things that you don't see. Just go with your eyes, okay? I grabbed some clay that's really, really wet. Um, it's like super duper plastic. And I want that because I don't want to fight the clay getting put down. And so basically what I'm doing here is I'm you know, paying attention to those areas where I would have a little bit of extra meat. And I'm just taking clay that's really nice and fresh and I'm laying it into place like that. I'm not using any slip, I'm not scoring. I might even kind of add some projection here. this area here by the side of the nose. So, you know, it might look like I'm adding a lot, but in terms of thickness, I'm really not contributing too much to the thickness of the wall at this point. But you pushed a lot of that out anyway, it's thin already. Yeah, I pushed most of it out. It's like, like Audrey said, it's a little thinner. And these are all things that are coming out of my head. So do what I say and not what I do. Make sure you use your reference material at all times because those are going to be the things that help you really figure it out. If you get to that place when you're sculpting and you start kind of chasing your tail and you're like, man, I don't know, it's probably that you're relying too much on your brain and not enough on your eyes at that point. It's kind of, we're just laying things down. When it comes to ears, we talked about finding that place underneath the eyebrow, in between the nose and the um, lip and then going from the corner of the eye back, that's the back of the ear. When it comes to ears, I probably would go ahead and score this. And maybe that's just because by the time I get to ears, my clay's been sitting, sitting around for a while. And I generally start with kind of like a generic ear shape. So, you know, where it's a little bigger and curvier at the top, and it's a little, I don't know, less big at the bottom. And I'm gonna do that in such a way that it's kind of thicker at the back of the ear and then it's really skinny at the front. That's because your ears stick out from your head. So if you've got an ear and it's just flat, you need to actually put a little bit more meat behind it so that it protrudes out from the head like so. This is why I love that one book I showed you because it has all those examples of ears because there's not really like, I've never come across a really great ear tutorial. <laughs> That's too close to the front. Yeah, I don't know why that. Maybe it's because my head's not deep enough in the first place. Sorry, I'm trying to get over here where everyone can see. So there's just lots of little things to notice, like your earlobe sometimes breaks this plane of doing this and it kind of comes forward. Those little tiny things are going to be the things that make it feel like you're kind of getting some accuracy. I've seen all kinds of ears where people just kind of make up what the anatomy does, which I think is kind of funny. Ear-ish. Ear-ish. Ear adjacent. This might be where I give the nose a little bit more character by just adding some play to it. 
do you find you know to do that when you've done something else? And when you add something here, and now you have to add something there? No, I'm like whoever that was that asked if I just stay on one side of the face all the time, and I do. There's probably so many of these been unfinished heads around the world that have half of the face done. And it's always that side. Because I'm a lefty and I go to the right side of the face, it's right side. Okay, I talked a little bit earlier about making your lips the same way you do your eyelids, where you have a coil that's tapered on two ends. So I would kind of lay that into place. Another way you can do this is by taking little balls of clay. You've got two balls of clay, and these are like little fat pads. You can think of this like if you've done a lot of makeup where you're contouring and you're highlighting. How, does anybody watch the drag queen videos where they're doing like really serious makeup and they've got like all this contouring and then all this highlighting and then they just blend the hell out of it? That's kind of what I'm doing is I'm like I'm creating all these things that are going to be volumes of the face and they kind of look a mess right now like that. But then I would go back and I would start to blend all those things together. but having those placed on there individually helps it start to feel more accurate. So you can kind of see like that side versus the other side. Um, so now what I would do is I would take, I have these tools that are really fun. I have this one and this one. And these are like your, you like serrated better than sawtooth? Yes. These are like your serrated ribs, but they're really small. So the serrations are quite small, and they give you like a really nice texture that sometimes I leave that texture just because I like the way it looks. It's like matching 3D. It kind of is, yeah. I think I wanted to give it a bigger nose. When I was young, I hated my big nose. So I've had this fascination with like little pixie noses my whole life. <laughs> and I noticed that I would make a lot of art with pixie noses. So now I try to actively rail against the pixie nose <laughs> and do bonkers. <laughs> Which I haven't done, but. finding it hard to turn this around all the time, so if you want to see, you might move. It seems like there's, uh, one could put on too much lips, the lips are coochie, uh -huh. and not growing out of the face, but it seem to be. Absolutely, so that's one of the biggest things when I'm talking about initially making that kind of bulge around the mouth, that's so that you kind of start to create that area around the mouth that sticks out. If you just put lips, coils onto the face, it's gonna look horrible. So I probably do that, and then, you know, I'm not, I'm not there yet. I would have a lot more to do. Do we have a, a stiff bristle paintbrush anywhere? Is that a round or a flat? A uh, flat piece. Mm -hmm. That will work. We got one, Audrey. So this would be like an acrylic brush is what we want. We don't want a um, we don't want a watercolor brush with those soft bristles. You actually can kind of sculpt with the brush. So I wouldn't usually spray it. I would usually just dip my brush into water. But then I like to follow up what I've done by kind of smoothing those things out. And you can see like I can move the clay with the brush, which I like. And I like to retain a little bit of the texture. But this would be like when I'm closer to finishing things up and feeling like I want to be done is when this, when this step would come out. talk about hair. You want to do my hair model? Of course. I'm still so when we look at hair, it falls into pieces and it falls into chunks. And you have, turn your head this way, 
and you have hair that's kind of bigger and chunkier, and you have hair that's skinnier and chunkier, and you have really little wispy thin hairs. Thank you, that was all I needed from you. Um, that's how I would like for you to think about sculpting hair. A lot of people want to do like the spaghetti hair thing, and you also want to kind of pay attention to the direction that the hair moves. If there's a part, that's always a natural place for me to start by putting my hair, and I'll kind of work it into a shape, you know, maybe like this that's kind of slabby, but not totally slabby. And I will start wherever that part is going to be. Um, and I'll kind of just blend that down into place like so. Maybe use my tool here to blend, but then also help create a shadow where the hair lays over that part of the head. And I try to pay attention to the movement of the hair. So if it's swooping up and then down, I'm going to try to mimic that. Another thing I'd like to caution you against, just because it's my pet peeve, which doesn't mean you have to not do it, because who cares what I think, but um, is when you get this texture on here, like the whole idea of this is to avoid, avoid doing like the spaghetti hair, where you're taking the garlic press and you're squeezing out the hair and you're applying it so you have all these strings. We're thinking more about those chunks or sections of hair don't draw lines into your piece we're sculpting. So try to create like a faceted movement where you get highlights and you get shadows. Otherwise it's gonna feel like a drawing. How that sounds like I'm some kind of Nazi sculpting teacher. Um, but that's kind of how I would do that. And I would do a lot more. When it comes to putting my real hair on, I use a yet I use something called Yes Paste, um, which is like a Mod Podge basically, but it's acid-free and it doesn't yellow. And I just kind of brush that on with a brush, and I start below the seam and work up to the seam. The seam is the last thing I do, so it's kind of the opposite of this. And then I'm going back with this brush and trying to kind of make those lines look a little less harsh and kind of create more fluid movements because I have water on my brush and I can kind of make that happen and it feels a little prettier to me. So this is like our basis here. Then we go into the additive, just paying attention to those meaty areas of the face, right? Um, and then just making sure that that ear sticks out. Obviously I need to attach it a little bit better on the back side here. Okay. That's kind of our time, I think. I'll keep talking and hanging out and chatting and helping you, but I just wanted to, in terms of instruction, get this out before any of you have to go. So when you're sculpting, do you generally cover, you know, like the top of our head is open right now. Yeah. Do you use, uh, Thanks. <laughs> do you use, the, do you cover the, close do it I with the hair? Do I cover it off? Close it with the hair? You, or do you? Yes. I would probably frequently. Close it and then put hair on. I would probably cover it with the hair, but one thing that you could do would be just to kind of create yourself a cap, a cap out of a slab like this. This won't be big enough. And then you'd kind of take your thumbs and you push up like this. And then that technique I was telling you where you push your, your clay wall together, that helps make it more of a bowl shape. So if this were the right size, then I could cap that off like that. And I would make it overlap a little bit i probably score and slip that. I might thin this out really thinly. By doing that, where it overlaps, you have less clay that you have to manage and move out of the way. But I'm usually too lazy and I just do hair over the top. I don't usually work in this scale, actually. I'm usually doing much smaller pieces, so this is a little different. Okay, we can keep working now if you guys want. And <laughs> if you have questions, holler at me.